I really want a day where I can code 100% locally without spending a single dollar on cloud-based LLMs. I know I'm pretty far away from that, but today I took that challenge on specifically because you can see I'm logged into it right now. This is my framework desktop. You can see here that I have 96 gigabytes of memory allocated to VRAM. I am currently using 79 point, point something of that with the GLM 4.5 Air model. So today I took on the challenge of using just local models for coding. I wanted to see if it was possible, if it would be a pleasant experience. Here is my framework desktop. Uh, my desk is all scratched up and everything, the one that I have it on, but this is my, now my dedicated LLM server. It, I have the 128 gigabytes of unified memory. It's a little bit different than that because of the way you kind of allocate it in BIOS, but I have 96 gigabytes of that allocated to VRAM manually. I have 32 gigabytes allocated to system and it's got about 256 gigabytes of memory bandwidth, which what we're going to see is the limitation on this model is primarily going to be this memory bandwidth, unfortunately. I also had a Windows RTX 5090 that I ran all day today, which is the computer I'm recording on right now. But my goal was I can run slower, bigger models here, faster little models like Quinn 330B at like 80K context. So I can do my direct coding with this one, knowing that I'm going to be doing a lot more manual coding, totally fine with that. But my goal was I want to have just some longer running tasks here. I wanted to use big context, bigger models. So I started going down and trying to figure out what models I actually wanted to run. And I came up with Quinn 3 Coder 30BQ8 underscore K A underscore XL. I wanted to get 200K or more context in. And then I also wanted to check out the ByteDance OSS seed model, the Q8K underscore XL. And I did a Q5 version of that. And I also wanted to test out GLM 4.5 Air and, of course, GPT OSS 120B. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about these models in particular, but really, what I wanted to do was prove that I could pleasantly code with local models only, given that I could use like my Quinn 3 Coder 30B A3B on this machine and actually be able to get like fast TPS and then bigger, slower ones on my framework desktop. And you could see how much slower it is here, for example, ByteDance OSS Seed. Now this isn't currently in LM Studio, so I had to build llama.cpp to get this to work. It could be a configuration or something that I don't have right, but I was only able to get about five TPS at any sort of large context there. Now, the mixture of expert models, the non-dense models, dense models are the ones that are not like MOE model. Actually, I can get pretty good speeds. We're getting like 40 TPS here. We're getting uh, 36 TPS here. The thing that surprised me though, is I was able to get about 16, sometimes I could get up to 18 tokens per second on GLM 4.5 Air. But there's some problems with GLM 4.5 Air, which I'll talk a little bit about in a minute. So my goal was this one I wanna run in Rue code because my assumption is that it would be really good at prompt-based tool calling. You can see how I have this kind of loaded in here. At this particular one, I'm only using 49.6 gigabytes of memory here. Now, settings are so important. I learned so much about how to set these things up because I was trying to optimize for speed and memory consumption here. So I want to talk about a few things that I think are more important than I originally gave them the credit for. First off is the evaluation batch size. Prompt processing is a big limitation on the framework desktop. If you are putting in, let's say you're sending something with open code or root code or crush, I'm going to be talking about crush a lot. That initial prompt is kind of large and it can take two minutes, three minutes, sometimes longer for it to process. That is a long time. What you can do is you can tune this batch size and get it to a point where you find like a sweet spot on it. For example, I ended up going with 2048. It was a little bit faster than 1024 but it was a decent amount faster than 512. So you have to kind of like just do a bunch of testing and each model might be different. So basically what I would do is I would have a big prompt to go in and I would see how long the prompt processing would get, take. I would change the evaluation batch size and I would try again. Um, I even tried it as high as uh, like 4096. The other things that are incredibly important, uh, which I've talked about again in the past was really flash attention, Kcache quantization and Vcache quantization. There's some nuance here. I found that Kcache quantization, if you make it Q8, which is a lot of times I have to do, I'll have to like set this to Q8 here. And let me just pull up my local one here. We can kind of talk about it in practice a little bit more. So let's say I turn flash attention on and then I hit this. If I set this over here, let me move this like this. 
So if I set this to Q8, you can actually get a little bit more latency. Not significant, but there's definitely a little bit more latency. So you're dealing with a little bit more speed issues there. But it does lower the VRAM usage that's happening there. Finally, another thing that I've heard talked about is playing around and testing this tri -M map. I did not mess with that that much, but it's something that's on my list to do. Supposedly that depending on the model or the version that you're actually running against, you can actually get sometimes better performance. The other thing, so I'm on my Windows computer now, but if I was on my framework desktop, for example, there is a runtime. Now the runtime is, well, basically here I'm doing CUDA because I have the RTX 5090, but AMD has Rock M. Now, everywhere that I was reading is, depending on the version of how you set things up or whatnot, Rock M can be slower than Vulkan. I couldn't actually get any of the models that I wanted to run at large context running in Rock M. I could run them in Vulkan just fine. So there is memory allocation issues I start running into, especially with Rock M on the framework desktop. I know that's still being worked on, but again, if anyone knows more about that, you basically get buffer overflows and stuff like that. So I ended up running the Vulkan runtime, which actually doing research, reading the forums and stuff, I found a lot of people were saying they got better performance with, which, you know, if we could get better with Rock M and, I, and that was wrong in some way, I'd be totally happy to improve that. Now, my initial pain that I want to talk about, I decided I was going to start the day with GPT OSS 120B. And it's slow, especially when you're pro processing a ton of stuff. So I was trying to run this in um, the agentic coders, like, you know, the way that I'd want to do this. I'd actually want to run this in like open code and do stuff. But it just started like duplicating code. Like I had these two functions here. It decided to add them, I guess, double them up. It kept adding them. I'm like, okay, kill, kill that. I don't know what you're doing here. So just really odd behavior. And it's tough because my main objective going into this was I was going to have planning and larger things happen slowly because I didn't care about the speed of that. But even when it was trying to do something a little bit larger, this wasn't even that large, but it was larger than the task I was working on with Quinn 3 at the time, it screwed it up. So I started getting frustrated with GPT OS S120B, um, and I, I jumped over to Crush because I wanted to see, you know, what it would do there. And you can see here, this is GPT OSS 120B, I'm at 72.3K. It worked pretty well for a while, but then I just started getting threes, which I don't understand, like three, 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 three. So yeah, my initial pain this morning was rough, but nothing accounted for what I ran into that I did not expect. I knew prompt processing was gonna be slow. I did not realize it was going to be incredibly slow. So this is just to show you what it looks like. Um, this is what you see. But when I'm running the big models, it will be 30 seconds between a couple percent. So you end up running for a very, a very, very long time. So I was just asking AI about it. So the TTFB is what AI kept calling it. Um, I had a 20,456 token prompt. And I was trying to optimize around how fast I could get that to process. So I was talking a little bit about the eval batch size that we talked about a little bit. And ultimately, the fill rate is just tough. Like, it's just got to process it. It was calculating that we're getting 170.5 tokens per second because I had timed it at about two minutes um, at that 20,456 before it even started doing anything while it was actually processing it. But as you went to different, like further on into the chain or use different models that were slower, nothing, nothing prepared me for just the timeouts. So it makes sense, but it actually makes these models unusable in root code or open code. So here's one that I was actually doing with GLM 4.5 Air. And you can see it actually did, it's a large prompt that it sent. Like it looks like it's probably just 80K that it sent up and I had it maxed out and it timed out. And I was actually trying stuff in open code and you can see here, timeout. And I actually saw on GitHub that there's a, there's a post going asking about how to control timeouts um, for open code in particular. And then I actually found that Crush is the only one that I could actually get without a timeout. I could let it run as long as I wanted. So around a few hours in, I discovered that I needed to be using Crush. That wasn't my plan 
coming into the day. Crush kind of just landed there, uh, but I was very fortunate with it. And what I ended up finding is with Crush and using Quin3 Coder Q5 or Quin3 Coder Q8 or even GPT OSS 120B, I could actually start getting some stuff done. Now, I found with GPT OSS 120B, with the way I had it set up, uh, I had a much better job using it to just ask questions about the code base rather than having it try to write code. So what I started doing is just kind of doing some like orienting my thoughts around like what needed to be done, asking questions into Crush. And in fact, I may even have some of those actually up still at this point. Um, so here's one. Yeah, so you can see here, I'm actually got GPT OSS 120B. Uh, it looked like I was doing a little bit of actual coding um, at, the, at this point where I changed the sidebar. So you can see that I got to the point where I actually had something that was working, but it was slow and I was fine with the slowness, but the timeouts actually made it sad for me because GLM 4.5 does not work in open code, it does not work in Crush. I tried a few different versions of it. I tried a bunch of stuff. From what I can tell, it doesn't seem to support native tool calling. I'm basically going off the little icon that they have in LM Studio. If you go to the models that you have downloaded, uh, what you'll see here is this little tool icon. You do not see that tool icon when you're looking at GLM 4.5 Air. So by the end of the day, uh, this is probably the last few hours. I'm like, I cannot actually get much done trying to use the framework desktop at the speeds that it's working at because in those agentic loops, the initial prompt is so big. So basically teeing it up and getting it to run was taking minutes of time, depending on the model you're running. Then for whatever reason, the, the model would fail or the agent would fail or a tool call would fail, something would fail. So you'd end up wasting way too much time actually accomplishing anything. So I called this like getting back to basics because I opened up Jan AI and I'll just show you here. I did a bunch of stuff where I was just kind of going through and tweaking stuff in a file. Like I would put my code in there and I would say, give me back the full code. And it did a great job. This is GLM 4.5 Air. Uh, you can see here all the models that I actually have loaded on my home server with LM Studio. So this was a page that I roughed out with Quinn 330B. It actually doesn't look bad, but it's not great. I wanted to like make it pop a little bit more. And I can't, I couldn't get GLM 4.5 Air to work in any agent tool. I didn't, I was trying to think like, what other model do I have that's good at design? GPT OSS one, uh, 120B did not do well. Quinn 3 Coder, the 30B, I'm using the 30B one, is, it designed this. I thought it looked actually pretty good for the 30B one. Uh, so, but I wanted to like get some different opinions on it. So after using Jan AI, I ended up with something like this. Now, is this perfect? No, I would still need to go manually tweak stuff. I could probably iterate some more in the chat, but I have this collapsing, so that can be expanded. I don't know if I like where this plus button is for adding custom agents, uh, where before it's like a box like down there. Um, this here, I don't like these, these, uh, badges that are all the way across, but I do like the style of this GLM 4.5 air. And just to show you here, let me see if I can actually see. So this is further on into the chain. So I got, so if you start off, you can get 10 seconds or 10 tokens per second. Here's nine. Let me go all the way at the top. Cause another thing that I realized, which makes total sense it, you can see me pasting everything in there to actually do it. My first pass was 17 tokens per second. 14 tokens per second, 12 tokens per second, 10 tokens per second. You know, it's kind of interesting. So I just started like starting over a lot um, to actually get this to work. So just had a timer going. That took two minutes and 30 seconds to actually complete the prompt processing here. Now we have to wait for the TPS side and you can see here we're sitting at 14 tokens per second. If we wanted to actually take a look at the what the computer's doing, itself, you can see here that the GPU is actually firing off. It looks like we're at 99% here. The other thing I would say about the computer is it's very quiet. It stays under, like, it. this is actually pretty warm for it, so the fan's probably going to spin up here now. But it typically stays under 80 degrees Celsius most of the time. And when it's idle, you don't even hear it. I barely hear it right now with the fan spinning up on it. It's just so quiet. I also had to put it in performance mode so I could boost past the... It was stopping at like 115 watts. So I can actually boost up to, so you can see there 136, 138 watts. So I had to configure that to make sure that it could boost up to 140. Actually, I actually haven't seen it hit 140, but it's supposed to be able to hit that. You just saw 139 there. So 
this is going to run for quite a while. So imagine working with something this speed and an AI coding assistant. I just don't think it works. I think coding locally, you probably just have to change the way that you work. And I went through this interesting journey to get there because I woke up all bright eyed, believing that I could actually have the best of both worlds doing agentic AI assisted coding across both of these. And I pro proved like really clearly in my mind that I can do stuff here pretty fast, but I'm very limited by what that model can do. And I, I'm limited here because of limitations in the AI coding tools. Uh, and the fact that when it does work and it's running slow, if there are issues, it's painful because you lose a lot more time. Because here, like if we jump over here to JNAI, it's still going. And in particular, this is still thinking. <laughs> so it's pretty wild to think about. Like this is even with lower thinking set on the inference side on my server. I don't even have that cranked all the way up. So if you're really big into local coding, I think you need a combination or maybe I am overcomplicating this, but I think the benefit of my setup is that I have the ability to run bigger models that are smarter, but slow in a non-agentic way. And then I can run little worker models like my Quinn 330B, A3B model on my RTX 5090 to do the grunt work. And I think that ended up being the sweet spot. So I think my original theory about having them both run agentically was wrong and flawed. But back to basics is how it went. And I'm very happy, honestly, with a lot of the work that I ended up getting out of, especially GLM 4.5 Air. And I was actually pretty happy with the work that I got out of Quinn 3 Coder A3B. But even the Q5 one running directly on my RTX 5090, I was able to get a decent amount done. But just to be totally honest, I did end up writing a lot of code manually because my goal today was literally not to use Claude, ChatGPT, or anything for code. I could use I could use them to ask questions about setup or model configuration or things like that, but not for code. So that's where I ended up landing. And I would love to know your guys' thoughts on this. If you were to do an experiment like this, how would you approach it differently? You know, are the things that you think I should try differently if I were to do something like this again? And let me know what you'd like to see from the framework desktop now that I have that available. I can load a lot bigger models in there and play around with stuff that I couldn't do before, even if it is at a slower speed. All right. I appreciate you all. This has been fun. Till next time, everyone. Peace out. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.